This is a recording of How Groundhog's Garden Grew by Lynn Cherry. Little Groundhog was hungry. Beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible, he exclaimed as he crept into a neighbor's lovely vegetable garden. He was nibbling on some fresh green lettuce when Squirrel rushed down from her tree. Little Groundhog, Squirrel scolded, this food does not belong to you. If you take food that belongs to others, you will not have a friend in the world. Why don't you plant your own garden? I'm sorry, little groundhog told her, embarrassed, but I don't know how. Well then, replied Squirrel, I will show you. First you will need seeds, said Squirrel. Little groundhog helped Squirrel and her friends pick beans and peas from pods and seeds from a sunflower's dropping head. They collected seeds from inside peppers, cantaloupes, cucumbers, and tomatoes. Squirrel chewed a hole into a pumpkin and handed Little Groundhog the gooey seeds, saying, We'll dry these in the sun, then we can plant them in the spring. A chill breeze blew in. It's time to dig up potatoes, Squirrel said. Little Groundhog watched Squirrel and thought, That looks like fun. And so he took a rake and poked around for potatoes, too. When they were finished, Squirrel added composted leaves to her garden as fertilizer for the coming year. Squirrel put aside a few potatoes and the tops of onions in a burlap sack. She put the seeds they had collected in tins to keep them dry and put the tins into her sack. November's snow flurries told Squirrel that winter was on its way. Sweet dreams, little groundhog, Squirrel said as she curled up in her tree hole. See you in the spring, little groundhog said, snuggling into his deep earthen burrow. As winter snows blew, Little Groundhog and Squirrel slept. In February, Little Groundhog awoke and drowsily ambled up to the burrow entrance. The wind made him shiver. He saw his shadow and hurried back inside. Oh my, he said, this will be a long winter. Weeks later, he awoke with a start. It's spring, he shouted, and up he scuttled to the burrow entrance. There he met Squirrel, carrying the burlap sack they had filled with potatoes and the tins of seeds. Rise and shine, Squirrel said. It's planting time. Look, the potatoes are sprouting. First, we'll cut them into little pieces with two sprouts each. Then we'll plant them with their sprouts pointing up and cover them with soil. Each sprout will grow into a new potato plant. Next fall, we'll dig new potatoes out of the ground. Let's find a sunny place for your garden. When they found a good spot, Squirrel told Little Groundhog, First, we need to dig in the soil to loosen it up. Next, they planted the cut-up potatoes. Then they dug rows and sprinkled in carrot, beet, parsnip, and radish seeds. All these vegetables will grow under the ground, Squirrel told him, so we call them root crops. They covered the seeds with dirt and gently watered them, and at the end of each row... Squirrel stuck markers to help them remember what they had planted. Squirrel told Little Groundhog, plants need lots of sun. We'll plant taller vegetables in the back so they won't cast a shadow over the shorter ones. So behind the row of root crops, they planted seeds of tomatoes, peppers, and leafy greens. Some vegetables grow on vines, said Squirrel, and she pounded sticks into the ground for the pea and bean plants to climb. Some plants grow very big, said Squirrel. They planted the seeds of pumpkins, zucchinis, yellow squash, sunflowers, corn, and artichokes far apart to give them lots of room to grow. The next day, Squirrel said, let's visit my garden. I want to show you the plants that come up year after year by themselves. They're called perennials. Sure enough, shoots of raspberries and asparagus were already poking up through the ground. Squirrel dug up frilly young asparagus plant for Little Groundhog's garden. She told him, you'll need to wait three years before this asparagus has nice, thick stems to eat. Little Groundhog said, thank you. I'm off to plant my perennials. Every day, Little Groundhog watched and waited and watered his garden. Then one day, tiny seedlings emerged. What a wonder, he exclaimed. But as they grew, he worried. Are these seedlings too crowded together? What should I do, he asked Squirrel. Pull some up and plant them somewhere else, she said. Little Groundhog pulled up a few seedlings and looked at them. The peas, the beans, and all the seeds had split open. From each, a root grew down and a shoot grew up. 
Little Groundhog transplanted some seedlings where they had more room to grow. Wren and Praying Mantis said to Little Groundhog, If you promise not to harm us with bug spray, we birds and insects will help you with your garden. We will eat the harmful insects that hurt your plants. Little Groundhog promised. As the weeks passed, plants grew and blossomed. Bees, flies, and butterflies came to eat the nectar and carried pollen from flower to flower. They told Little Groundhog, the wind, the rain, and we insects pollinate your flowers so they can become fruits and vegetables. Little Groundhog noticed that after a flower was pollinated by an insect or by the wind, its petals dried up and fell off. Underneath was the smallest beginning of a tiny vegetable. A tiny tomato, a tiny cucumber, a pepper, an eggplant, a pea pod, a zucchini. So this is how a garden grows, Little Groundhog cried jubilantly. Tomatoes turned red. Heads of cabbage grew. A sunflower seemed to explode from the top of a tall stalk. Snap peas, string beans, peppers, lettuce, and chard grew larger under the warm sun. Little Groundhog rejoiced. He ate his very own vegetables, plain and fresh, from his very own garden all summer long. When fall came again, Squirrel wanted to share one more secret with Little Groundhog, cooking. And so they stewed tomatoes, boiled corn, broiled potatoes, stir-fried veggies, and even stuffed a baked zucchini, saving the seed to plant the next year. There is so much more than they could eat themselves. What do we do, asked Little Groundhog. We share, said Squirrel. What a great idea, said Little Groundhog. As they sat around the table, their friends exclaimed, Thank you for inviting us to this amazing feast. Little Groundhog replied, Thank you all for forgiving me for eating from your gardens last year. And thank you, Squirrel, for teaching me how to grow my own. It's beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible. Let's eat. What a fortunate creature I am, he thought. Delicious, nutritious, homegrown food and wonderful friends to share it with. Little Groundhog grew into a big groundhog and became known far and wide for his annual Thanksgiving dinner. And that is how Groundhog's Garden grew.